All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to do the rod slide. This is in Unit 7. Start off with a 2D sketch on the XY plane. What I'd like to do is I'm going to, I'm going to design a block around the origin. As I do most of my items, I always like to design around the origin. Do an overall height overall width, and then put a formula off the origin. Go ahead and put a formula from the origin to the bottom edge, overall height divided by two. Use the left edge to the origin, overall width divided by two. And then I can go in and, and put my actual dimensions in and do three inches wide zoom out and I'm going to do two and a half inches tall this is the overall height of this object a lot of people read that drawing and they don't realize that that two and a half goes all the way to the bottom which will give you the uh, overall height so notice how it's fully constrained I'll finish my sketch do an extrusion to turn it into that full block. I'm going to do a symmetrical extrusion just to keep everything off the origin in the center. Distance A of my extrusion is going to be 3 inches. That will be the depth of it. So I have an overall block. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw a few sketches and I'm going to extrude cut material away. So I'm going to do it on this right side here. I'm going to do a 2D sketch on this right side. I'm going to sketch in two rectangles. I'm going to snap to the upper left-hand corner for the one. And I'm going to go to the right, the upper right-hand corner, snap to that corner. And then I'm going to come down. I'm actually going to line these two up. So that will constrain those horizontally. So now I can come in and put some dimensioning. The width here is 0.5. The width here is 0.5. Now notice this corner wasn't properly constrained. So that's fine. We can go in and, and fix it up. So I'll we'll use a coincident constraint. Constrain that corner to that corner. Now it locks it in. The bottom here needs adjusted, so I'm going to go ahead and put a dimension from the bottom of that rectangle to the bottom of the part. That height reads 0.375. Notice how the other one drops down with it. That's because I have it uh, It's constrained and locked in. We could call that collinear, or it could have been locked in with that horizontal constraint. Either way. I'm going to finish my sketch because if you noticed it was fully constrained. Go ahead and do an extrude cut. An extrude cut using the cut method here for the output. I'm going to go through all so I don't need to actually put a distance in. And click OK. Cuts that away. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, the bevels in. So I'm going to do a 2D sketch on this front surface here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle on the left. I'm going to draw a triangle on the right so that I could once again do an extrude cut out. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll draw this triangle. In fact, you know, I don't need to worry about putting dimensions on it. Let's just draw a triangle. Make sure you snap to the edges. And you want to make a closed shape here. Closed triangle. Do the same thing on the other side. Once again, I don't put dimensions on it just yet. Just get the actual triangle designed and snapped to the edges and the corners. Okay? Now... I'm going to go ahead and put dimensions in. So let me dimension this left edge to a 
the point here that the triangle makes. That dimension is going to be one inch. And then I'm going to dimension an angle here from the top to this line on an angle. I'm going to dimension that to be 45 degrees. That's the only thing you need because look how it locks it in. The next is going to dimension from this right edge to this point of the triangle. Um, now, I can dimension that, but it's not what's given on the drawing. So I'm actually going to remove that dimension. And I'm going to dimension it from the bottom. So if I dimension from this point to the very bottom, that dimension on the drawing itself that's given, that dimension's one inch. So a little bit different there. Now I'm going to go ahead and put an angular dimension in here to be 45 degrees. Notice how they're two different size triangles. So it's one inch from the bottom here, one inch from this left side over here. And also notice they're all blacked out, and down in the lower right it says it's fully constrained. So we can go ahead and finish our sketch. Go to Extrude. We're going to extrude cut these two triangles. Make sure you have the output set to cut. I'm going to set the uh, distance to through all. Just go through the whole part so I don't have to actually type in an actual distance. Click on OK. And that's what it should look like so far. Okay. Like I said, the main thing that most people uh, have trouble with is the overall height. The overall height from the top here to the very bottom is 2.5. A lot of people struggle with that with the way the drawing reads. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start another 2D sketch on this angled inclined surface. Draw a circle on that surface. Draw it anywhere, any size. Now I come in and put dimensions. So it's going to be one inch from the center to the right edge here. One inch. It's going to be one inch from the center to the very bottom edge here. Type that in. And then go ahead and type the diameter, which didn't give me the diameter on that. Click. Try it again. So the diameter is going to be 1.5. Okay, notice it's fully constrained. Finish our sketch. I'm going to do an extrude cut. And a lot of people ask how far this cut should go. Well, the drawing doesn't say, it doesn't indicate any depth. So you just assume that it goes through all. That's what we're going to put down, through all. Hit OK. And I'll spin this around, and it looks a little funky down here, but that's just the way it is. That's the, the angle that that slot comes down through, that hole. And that's what it's going to look like. So that is the rod slide and how I complete that.